In the following tape, the artist Michael Mazur works in the monotype medium. Monotype is a print medium in which ink or paint is applied directly onto a metal plate. The plate is then run through a press in the same manner as in etching. Since the plate itself is not altered, the result is a unique and spontaneous printed image. These are studies for a commission that I'm working on that was commissioned last uh, March by the Committee on the Visual Arts at MIT uh, for a dormitory at uh, 500 Memorial Drive. Uh, the space is a, uh, a meeting room or a large um, reading room uh, with a slightly curved wall about 44 feet. But you couldn't do like one enormous piece that would stretch the whole length because the wall is set up so that it's in wooden panels. And so it had to be um, uh, a, a pair, probably, of three panels, uh, two triptychs. And since I had been working in this particular kind of triptych or diptych format for a number of years with monotype, it seemed logical that, that I would solve it with two large pieces. What those pieces would be, the subject matter, uh, um, I didn't think about much at the time. And by the time I started to think about it, I was uh, working out at uh, Mashpee, Massachusetts, where I have a, um, uh, a summer place and spend most of the summer. And even then, it was really hard to think about what I wanted to do. I know that I knew at the time that it was going to relate um, in some way to the work that I had done with um, flower imagery. Um, but uh, I was also concerned that something more happened, that it wasn't simply a decorative piece, that there be a, a relationship to, to time, to a particular place, um, uh, something like that. Then suddenly I began to realize that uh, the cape for me had two very different kinds of experiences. Um, it had the daytime experience, which was very full and rich and bright. Uh, the islands were very um, uh, dense against the, the, the view against the lake. And um, the flowers were very rich in their colors. Everything was extraordinarily alive. But the night was something very different. And the night at the Cape was, uh, as a city boy and living in a relatively urban setting, the nights uh, in the country were very spooky, if you will. They, just, they were very uh, um, different as a visual experience. Um, a, a deep space, an uncluttered, a, 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 um, a brooding, a darkness. I don't know. I don't quite know how to, how to describe it. But um, these were two distinctly different kind of feeling states about the landscape. And uh, so the idea of two triptychs, two prints which related to each other, and then day and night, and how the same set of formal solutions, the same kind of landscape would change from the day to the night became uh, it began to be an interest and really became the basis of, of what was going to be the final images in these two pieces.
I've been working for some time with Bob Townsend down in his print shop in Boston. We have a good working relationship. He knows pretty much what I want and at any given time. Because of the scale uh, and physical demands of the project, it, it, would, it would have been impossible to think of doing it without him. On the first morning of work, I start um, on the night image. Bob has rolled up a plate in a fairly loose blue ink into which I paint directly the forms of the sunflowers. After I've painted the large, strong forms, there is a crucial overrolling with stickier black ink that lays onto only those parts of the plate which have not been painted. It avoids the, the looser ink in the flowers, but the blue still comes through and gives a glow to this new black color over the surface of the plate. And then I did um, a piece which was essentially a triptych format, a monotype, um, over here. And I wasn't happy with it. It was something, uh, something unexpected needed to happen. So one day, I, just I, I had made a night image, and I didn't like the way the night image worked. So I cut out one section of night image because I wanted this section, I kind of hung it on the wall and I said, there's something I like about the way that that works. So as usual, I would just uh, put it on the wall. And then one afternoon, I'm sort of in frustration, I said, well, what would it look like if I just sort of slapped it on top of this other image? Just put it on there, you know, and, and let it happen, whatever is going to happen. So I put it right on the, on the image. And I, I sort of was taken aback by it. Something had happened. And then it occurred to me that what I had done was to make a second level of comparison between the two diptychs, the uh, two, two, two triptychs, um, that within each print, not only was there a record and uh, of, the, of the forms of the previous print, but there was also a sort of memory or a switch day unto night, night unto day. The inset on the large monotypes will be printed at the same time instead of collaged later. Uh, I use a, a thin metal plate, uh, aluminum plate. Uh, and, and simply superimpose it on the larger one. Cleaned out? Cleaned out. And 
rolled up in that. There is nothing for me more exciting than working on that metal, on the inks on that metal plate, the sound of working, the, uh, the, the way the terps moves into it, uh, into, into my material and, and uh, softens it up. The other issue is the speed of working makes you give up a certain amount of control. And I like giving up that control. It all happens immediately, quickly, and it's printed. And once it's printed, unless I go back with pastel, I don't have much. I've done it. I have to live with it. And the excitement of living with something that works out well in that kind of speed is really, uh, it's tremendous for me. print now. Uh, it took from about nine in the morning till midnight uh, to finish the process of painting on the three plates. Normally um, I would spend no more than an hour uh, on a plate and um, it's taking a chance to let the ink dry even as long as we've, um, we've allowed it.
I think that there is a, a basic issue in, in, in painting or drawing or whatever, I mean, it's not limited to media, about memory and the function that memory plays in, um, in a work of art. I mean, when you're working from life, memory plays a, a role because there is a moment, even though there's a comparison going on, one can can, can compare the work with the real thing. In the move from, of the head, from looking at the thing to, in fact, looking at the work of art, there is a loss, there is a gap. And that gap is filled by memory. Um, if you extend that gap to, let's say, going someplace, seeing something, and then coming home and, and drawing it, uh, now memory uh, plays a slightly more important role. You have to, it's become selective in a much greater way. There are things you forget and things you remember, and it's very often those things that you're remembering that are the, the closer to the core of, of the need to express yourself. But in this case, in the case of the cape, memory played an even larger role for me because of the particular circumstances of the, of, of the place itself, a place where one goes just one time of the year, so that the rest of the year you are remembering uh, what it was like that summer, what is, what, 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 what is the landscape like, and very often I'll find myself, my head will actually drift, my mind will drift to that place, to that view. Coming back in midwinter like this is sort of another aspect of the whole problem of remembering. Things, you know, are, are bare and, and all the structure is there and none of that, that growth and confusion. Something about the, the change of seasons that goes along with the change of night to day night simplifying or obscuring and day revealing and summer confusing and winter revealing again. You take a place, you make it your own and it becomes uh, it becomes more than real in a way. It becomes two-dimensional at the same time as it's three-dimensional. I mean, uh, it's a funny business. I mean, as I said before, you when you're working on the plates or working on the images from memory, you're trying to place yourself in here, you know. And in a funny way, when you're here, you place yourself back into the work, you know. Yeah. So it's as if they're both operating on some level at the same time. The next morning, I begin the day triptych. I use a lighter blue ink, the same as was used in the inset of the night image. And then I open up the surface with long streaks of turpentine wash. I use the roller again to pick up and lay down ink. The roller offsets the linear pattern and adds a slightly darker color as well.
it's sort of funny, you know, you, you have pictures of me working uh, and to the person looking at these pictures you sort of, you, you sort of uh, wonder, well, what's going on in his head? What's he looking at? And, 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 that's, and, and in fact, you're, you're in a working in a kind of daydream, really, uh, a sense of reverie. And in a way, if you, if you could say what you were doing at the time you were doing it, you'd be verbally repeating to yourself, sunflower, sunflower, island, island, cloud. Um, and it would be a, it would, it's, a, it's as if you are becoming, for that moment, one with both the material, with the plate, with the landscape. Uh, you are out of time. You are not in real time. Here the yellow roller has the opposite effect of the black roller. It'll lay down ink only where I've cleared away the surface. It'll also pick up some of the image from where it was drawn and, and offset it elsewhere. No matter how many images I make, I'm never entirely in control, nor do I want to be. Uh, when it comes off the press, there's always that excitement of uh, discovering a section that prints slightly differently than you uh, had imagined it would. Uh, but for every successful image, there are many that have to be simply thrown away, and uh, that's part of the whole process as well. This is what they look like together. It's strange to see them together for the first time like this. On the whole, though, I think that there's a lot there.
some things really surprised me. It came out just beautifully. This, certain sections like this section is really very exciting to me. And even this is much better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, of course, well, they won't have this uh, white border between them when they're actually in, uh, installed. There'll be just a slight, like a quarter of an inch grout between them, so you, they'll fit much more like one piece. I'm going to have to give them some time and sit and look at them a lot and maybe attack the whole problem once again when I'm uh, a little fresher to it. Try other, other possibilities, but, but I, I, on the whole, I, I, I feel good about it. I did go back to work again uh, on these images. Uh, I worked on at least five new pairs, uh, reducing the size of the inset, changing the quality of the relationship between the day image and the night image, and finally came up with, I think, uh, the last set, which was the most successful, uh, and the one which ultimately is the um, uh, commission.